How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to the weekend. It is the Earth Master here on Saturday, April 13th, 2024. About 9.36 in the a.m. here, California time. Latest activity here shows some movement into Southern California here within the last hour with a 3.8 earthquake coming in to the Borrego Springs area around the uh, San Jacinto Fault Zone. That's uh, just shy here of the plate boundary, which is the San Andreas Fault. Looks like a couple other earthquakes here within the vicinity of that 3.8 as well. So we'll continue to watch Southern California. Looks like this earthquake coming in a little bit ago was felt uh, across the area, even down to the San Diego region. Again, that is off of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. The San Andreas Fault continues to be quiet for now. We look here across the Pacific, seeing some odd earthquake activity out here, uh, ways away from the plate boundary and in a zone that uh, uh, really doesn't see a whole lot of earthquake activity. These are the old Hawaii islands out here. Uh, you can see the hot spot as the Pacific plate has moved across this area through the many, 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 many millions of years to where the Hawaii islands currently uh, sit at. But uh, this earthquake striking out there in the North Pacific Ocean, a 4.7 earlier this morning. Just a little odd. I don't recall the last time I've seen an earthquake out there. In fact, if you look at historical data here from 1900 to 2015, 4.5 and above shows nothing. Nothing out here. Not anything. So kind of an odd earthquake. Definitely got to pay attention to these little uh, small quakes that are, well, moderate quake, I guess, out there in the odd regions here away from the plate boundary. Definitely a, a strange one. We have been seeing quite a bit of a earthquake activity here across the southeast Indian Ridge as well. This is the plate boundary here that sits down way down here south west of Australia between the Antarctica plate and the Australia plate. Looks like that's going to be right over here couple earthquakes coming in with a 5.0 that was just before midnight and a more recent 5.1 so things stirring up out here in the divergent zones could see a little further uptick here across this region northward around the plate boundary a lot of times that uh, separation there of the uh, the plates two arrows pointing away from each other could add further strain out here against these um, plate boundaries Definitely watch that. All right, let's get back to California here and see what else is going on aside from some shaking going on in Southern California. Small amount of movement across the Ridgecrest area. The Bay Area looks a little cluttered up here. I noticed that last night. Uh, far as new activity goes, it looks like we've had a couple, a 1.3 and a 1.7, the more recent earthquake. But uh, notice a handful of earthquakes here in a pretty decent cluster centered around the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, quite a few of these fault systems here that branch off of the San Andreas Fault are uh, thought to be well overdue for a large earthquake. And a couple of these faults run through some major population densities out here. I believe the Hayward Fault here is a little bit more feared than other fault systems out here, such as the Calaveras Fault and areas up north here. So we'll continue to watch that. Definitely shown some signs of elevated activity there. Uh, we did have a four-pointer yesterday. Uh, yesterday morning, it looks like a four-pointer well off the coast of Northern California. Latest activity, well, doesn't really show too much here for Northern California. This is all from yesterday here. So most of the movement positioned about the Bay Area southward into the Pacific Northwest handful of smaller quakes up there across the Cascades. Really nothing major going on. Across the Intermountain West areas, a handful of smaller quakes. Let's go check out Yellowstone National Park, see how it's going, see what's going on over here in terms of earthquake potential, earthquake activity. And um, it really doesn't look like there's a whole lot happening here across the Yellowstone area. Seismograph stations there look fairly quiet, fairly calm. Some minimal movement out here in Texas and southern New Mexico. Uh, nothing else out here across the New Jersey area for now. Let's see what else we got here across the area of the Tonga Trench. A lot of this movement coming in yesterday. Some deeper quakes. 
Looks like we did see uh, at least another 4.9 deep into the Tonga Trench region, about 500 kilometers deep here. That uh, was followed up by a subsequent shallower earthquake activity upstream here, 5.3, 10 kilometers deep here across this subduction zone level. We'll keep an eye upstream here for some further movement across the area of Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands region. Looks like uh, that is going to be our quiet zone here today. Roughly about Papua New Guinea through Solomon Islands, down through the Vanuatu region for uh, lacking activity here in the last 24 hours, it looks like. I mean, that's just an odd earthquake, really odd. I, I, I look at these earthquake models day in, day out, hours at a time, and, you know, this is like the first time I've seen an earthquake out here in this area. So something is a little on the strange side. Something's happening out here across the Pacific Plate. Uh, super deep earthquake into the Izu Trench. Let's see, USGS reporting that. Well, they got one here from yesterday, 4.7, but that's not the deep one. I'm trying to look at, uh, it's going to be this 4.9. Well, take your pick, 4.9 or 4.7. And the depth of this earthquake is what uh, is important because that's fairly deep there into the Izu Trench area just off the south southern area of the Japan region. Clustering going on here still across the Taiwan area southward into the Indonesia Islands area with a haltage of the momentum right about here. We're not seeing a whole lot of advancement across this area. But again, keep an eye on this region as we could see some further uptick following this divergent boundary activity here uh, this morning. What do we got coming in here? 3.1 right now to the southern end of the Kermadec Trench, it looks like, or just the Kermadec Trench in general. Pretty deep earthquake right now. That's 600 kilometers deep. Goodness. Definitely getting some movement going on here. Of course, uh, you know, what could take place over here or what does take place could have uh, an adverse effect on areas upstream. But also, you know, you got to think about it. This plate boundary over here could adjust as well. When you move around one piece of the puzzle, it tends to affect other areas as well. So keep an eye on New Zealand. Let me go over here and check out the GeoNet servers from the New Zealand area real quick. And let's see what's going on here. Uh, GeoNet, there we go. I just need to make them make them a bookmark up here. It'd be a little bit easier. Uh, a couple threes and twos out here, at least according to the uh, website here. Let's bring up the all magnitudes and see what's going on. Latest one looks like that 3.1 just up here off the North Island coast. A couple other smaller quakes here in the vicinity of the uh, North and South Island area. This one's pretty deep here, 2.2, well underneath. The area, 107 kilometers deep there outside of the Taupo Super Volcano. All right, uh, what else we got here? Anything major cooking out here in terms of uh, earthquake activity? Canada had a, a pretty decent earthquake up here, it looks like, 4.4. Um, USGS not picking up on that. I believe that is coming off of the... Um, EMSC model. Let's bring this up here real quick and see if the uh, Earthquakes Canada map is reporting it. It does look like they are. Let's see here. Plate boundaries. 4.4. About 3 kilometers deep here outside of the Fort St. John area, BC region. Looks like that's about the only one in this area. Unless there's another one underneath here. Let's see. Doesn't look like it, but uh, yeah, a little bit of movement stirring up out there today. Puerto Rico area, a couple twos and threes. South America region, fairly quiet today. Uh, although a handful of smaller microquakes in the vicinity of the Peru Chile Trench into the Atlantic Ocean and way up by Iceland. Got a 3.3 coming in there. Looks like just outside of the Grindavik area. So let's go see what's going on there across the Iceland region. Here's the latest earthquake map. Oh, goodness. 150 earthquakes in the last 12 hours down here. Got a decent swarm stirring up here 
across this area. Uh, most of these earthquakes coming in, it looks like around five, six kilometers or so. Uh, of course, a lot of volcanoes out here, a lot of rift zones. Nothing but rift zones and volcanoes out here across Iceland. And that is a decent swarm of earthquake activity. Uh, let's go check out the live from Iceland here real quick and see what we got in terms of any new movement happening. There's the, uh, the large crater that's continuing to fountain there. Lava fountains going on there across the area. Let's back out a little bit, see what we got. Really not seeing anything elevated out here across this region, but uh, uh, definitely some type of earthquake swarm ongoing there away from the region to the northeast. Uh, here's the Savart Singhi power plant, Blue Lagoon out here. Things look uh, normal out here in this area. These are birds down here, I believe. They kind of leave a trail behind. Almost looks like, uh, I don't know what. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, these are little birds that are flying down here, I believe. Just got something to do with a video resolution as to why it's leaving a little trail like that. Uh, let's check out the Icelandic Met Office here. This is put out from, it looks like, yesterday. Still talking about how the eruption is continuing. And a land rise continues at a similar pace since the beginning of April. I don't see anything in terms of uh, any noticeable newsworthy article in terms of the earthquake activity out there that we're seeing today. Again, that's in a kind of a weird zone away from the Grindavik area, away from our current ongoing activity. But there's a rift zone that goes through here around um, a couple different volcanoes which are still currently green but we'll continue to watch it that's definitely a decent earthquake swarm popping off there all right so keep an eye on a few areas out here today california definitely looking active southern california more more uh, more so than the northern part of the state definitely keep an eye on that any kind of activity out here is Noteworthy to watch because the San Andreas Fault here, the southern segment, definitely primed for some big-time earthquake activity. It's just a matter of when. All right, space weather activity. See what's going on here across the uh, space weather world. We do have a new sunspot coming around the southeastern limb. This is the former sunspot, 3615. The culprit of many M flares when it was back around here the first time. This is the second time it's coming around. And it's a large area, but it does look slightly unorganized in terms of complexity. But we'll keep an eye on it. Still remains a threat there for some uh, decent flaring. As uh, far as the rest of the sunspots, we're noticing a little bit of growth up here across this region. But a separation in the core will prevent that from uh, flaring too much. Uh, active, big time active region up here on the northeastern limb. Got to watch that one. Just barely getting a, a glancing view here of the complexity of that sunspot. As you can see, flaring activity has kind of been heightened here over the last couple days with the new arrival here of these sunspots on the earth facing side. Uh, space weather, are you working? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, mostly consistent sea flare activity with an occasional M flare. Getting a whole lot of uh, popcorn cracking here across the graph. I kind of call that the uh, instability that we're seeing here on the graph. Uh, it does look like things are going to tone up a little bit in terms of the flare potential at the uh, upper levels. 99% chance for a sea flare. M flare at 35. X flare has been raised to about 5% potential here. So as these sunspots. The active regions come back uh, into a further Earth-directed view. We'll get, uh, obviously, a larger threat here. Looks like we're already flaring out here across this region with a sea flare. I believe that's a sea flare coming in, C1.9. Um, a chance here for some auroras coming up here, it looks like, on the April 14th time period. Doesn't look like much. Uh, let's see here what we got. Let me go over to the um, 
space weather prediction site here and see what they say. I'm going to put this into motion. This kind of gives us a good, well, I thought it was, thought I was going to put it into motion here. What's going on with that? Kind of a, there we go. So the earth here in the green dot looks like maybe the activity we're expecting is going to be from a, uh, a CME that was produced there, a small one, a couple days ago. Maybe it looks like this popped off here uh, a day or so ago in the Earth-directed view. There's the first one, second one behind that. Looks like the first one's barely going to clip us. Second one be maybe a little bit more uh, active in terms of stirring things up out here. Uh, in the Aurora department. So we'll continue to watch that. Really not expecting anything major, but KP index up around the four to five range. We'll, we'll check back on that once uh, things start picking up. All right, Storm Prediction Center right now. Not a whole lot of severe weather out here. Although on Monday, things are going to change out here. Look at that. Decent chance for some severe weather around Oklahoma City, uh, southern Kansas, and uh, parts of Texas out here as well. Could be a, a big threat for some tornado activity. We'll cover that a little bit later. Still a couple days off. Uh, looking at the numerical model. Here is the culprit of that severe weather maker on Monday. Right now it's over my area here along the West Coast. Making it feel like wintertime out here again. I got 46 degrees right now uh, in the middle of April. That's crazy to have uh, uh, this type of high temperature going on here during the day. Rainy, lots of rain coming in, expecting around an inch or so across the Sacramento Valley. That storm system is going to spin around a little bit here uh, through tomorrow. And then Monday, we're going to stir late Monday into Tuesday. We're going to stir things up out here for severe weather across those areas mentioned there in Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas. A look at the extended forecast here as we head into next, next week. Things look quite active here across the area um, at least towards uh early next next week got uh, some storm systems coming in out here we'll have to watch that it's a ways out but the weather models are showing uh it looks like some type of storm development uh, around that area later in the month uh, aside from that folks i think that's about it we'll just kind of watch things here today see how uh, the plates want to react. Again, that's kind of an odd earthquake way out here across this region. Some type of ridge going on out here, it looks like. Uh, not for sure how to pronounce that, correct, pronounce that correctly, but uh, all right. Hope everyone enjoys their Saturday. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening unless something major happens. Take care and uh, stay safe out there.